In this tutorial, we learn about the Rational Root Theorem, which is also known as the Rational Zero Theorem. And to learn about this theorem, we're going to look at a couple of examples. The first example is the one we see here. We have a polynomial function, f of x, which is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. And say that we're interested in finding this polynomial's roots. In other words, this polynomial's zeros. Now, what the Rational Root Theorem states is that if any of the zeros of this polynomial function are rational numbers, we call them rational roots or rational zeros, then they must be of the form p over q, where p is a factor of the constant term at the end here, so in this case 6, so I'll just write p is a factor of 6, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient, so in this case the 1 that's multiplying the x cubed. So I'll just write factor of 1. Now what this provides us with is a method for listing all the potential rational roots of a polynomial function. The factors of 6 would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. And the factors of 1, well, we just have plus or minus 1. In turn, since the rational root theorem tells us that any of the rational roots or rational zeros must be of this type, like I've just boxed in red here, then that tells us that any potential rational root is obtained by dividing each of the factors of 6 by the various factors of 1, which in this case is just 1. Now, dividing by 1, of course, doesn't change the value. So in this case, we can just go right ahead and list all the potential rational roots of this polynomial function, and those are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. And we're done. We've just listed all the possible rational roots of this polynomial function. Careful, these are possible or potential roots, meaning the rational root theorem isn't telling us that each of these is a solution. No, all that the rational root theorem allows us to do is to come up with a list of potential rational solutions. In fact, you can go ahead and check for yourselves but the zeros of this polynomial function are 1, 3, and negative 2. And these are all rational numbers, and they are all inside this list. Another example could be the polynomial function defined as f of x equals to 3x to the power of 4 minus 21x cubed plus 3x squared plus 19x minus 6. Well, again, say we're interested in finding the roots of this polynomial function, then the rational root theorem, or rational zero theorem, allows us to state that if this polynomial has any rational zeros, then we must be able to write them as p over q, where p must be a factor of this negative 6 that we have at the end here. So I'll just write factor of negative 6. And this q must be a factor of the leading coefficient, which in this case is 3. So I'll just write factor of 3. Now, the factors of negative 6 are the same as the factors of 6, and those would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and, of course, plus or minus 6. And the factors of 3 would be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. So, using the rational zero theorem, we can state that any rational zero that this polynomial function has must be obtainable by looking at the ratio of the factors of 6 with the factors of 3. So, if we consider 1 as a factor of 3, well, that leads us to 8 potential rational roots, those being plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. So we already know that some of the potential rational roots would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. But now we also have to consider the case where the factor of 3 is 3. In that case, we obtain plus or minus 1 over 3, plus or minus 2 over 3. We also have plus or minus 3 over 3, but that's just equal to 1, and plus or minus 6 over 3, which equals to 2, and we've already listed those. So we have to add on to these potential rational roots plus or minus 1 over 3 and plus or minus 2 over 3. And we're done. We've just listed all of the potential rational zeros for this polynomial function. 
And again, you can go ahead and check, but we find that the rational zeros or rational roots are negative 1, 1 third, 1, and 6. And indeed, all of these rational zeros can be found inside the list that we have here. And so that's what the rational root theorem is all about. It's about providing us with a list of potential rational roots or rational zeros. In our next tutorial, we're going to work through an entire example in which we find all of the rational roots of a polynomial function. And we'll do so using both the rational root theorem as well as Horner's method for evaluating polynomials, also known as the nested scheme. For now, though, that's it for this tutorial.